traumatic for a lot of people that were um, that were present. Um, I have a friend, uh, a good friend of mine, Yasin al who, you know, there's different reports, but it seems that maybe he's going to make it out. Um, I have another friend that I just saw now that lived on the 15th floor, and he did manage to get out alive. Um, he got out about four o'clock, and he's just got out of hospital now. And he's been uh, seriously affected by the experience, and seriously traumatized by the experience. In terms of where we place the responsibility and the accountability for this uh, tragic incident, we need to look firstly at the Grenfell Action Group continuously, not once, not twice, not three times, but continuously during the TMR and uh, the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea's attention towards the fact that the uh, building was not prepared for any type of incident like this. And they said pretty much word for word that it will take a massive loss of life for the ineptitude and competence of the, the constructing of this building, the maintenance of this building to be revealed essentially. And so um, they were warned and they knew that this building was not safe. The refurbishment, which depending to some sources it cost eight million pounds, other sources about 9.7 million pounds which again is outsourced and I think this is an important part of this because all part of the sort of neoliberal consensus which came across the political class in this country from the 80s was the idea that outsourcing was for the best. It's the idea that corporate power is number one more um, adept at handling issues and that corporate power is more important than state power. It's the, the self-hating weak state that essentially uh, ideology of neoliberalism imbues within the political class and they took that on. So um, they added cladding to the outside which clearly is flammable also and so exacerbated the issue of a fire which would have been easily contained by an electronic tower as had happened. It was contained and kept to one flat. Here it spread very quickly. So we saw that spread, you know, we had people crying for help and didn't see anyone jump but obviously we heard people jump you know we were breathing it in bits of the building were falling down on us bits of people's homes were falling down on us it reminds me of a poem by Mahmoud Darwish called the house is a casualty where it talks about every single element of the house as having been touched by a human presence whether it's a half finished bottle of milk or a bill or a notepad it's touched by a human presence and even to see that all around us see people's homework to see pages of books burnt and around us obviously it's very um very very harrowing thing to see and um you know as i say people uh, i love seem to have died in that building um and there has to be accountability for this there has people have to go to prison for this there has to be reparations for this but moreover we need to make sure that the people that um lived in that building have the right to be rehoused in the building in the same place if they want they have the right to be in the royal borough of kensington and chelsea what we've seen happen is um, according to reports they're only rehousing uh, the elderly and the vulnerable and that's completely wrong they have a serious responsibility to uh, rehouse the people that have been displaced uh, by this terrible terrible uh, situation so really i think this not only is a condemnation of the uh, contractors responsible for this building but moreover it's a condemnation of austerity, it's a condemnation of the neoliberalism and of the custom emergency services because were they better equipped potentially people who have lived that didn't have to die in the first place. They built the uh, Kensington Academy which also impeded the ability of emergency services to get towards the building. You know, were this Kensington Town Hall, this would not have happened. This would not have happened. It would not be the empty carcass that the building now is. And uh, so you know, I just want to send my biggest condolences to everybody that lost anyone and anyone that's looking for anyone at this time. And if anyone needs anywhere to stay, if anyone needs anything, they are completely have the right to contact me and I will do whatever I can to help them, whether it's helping you be housed or whether it's helping you um, to your needs at this time. Obviously, the uh, outpourings and such references in the news of people coming in and presenting food and pretend, prevent, presenting water and presenting um, clothes and stuff and bedding is fantastic, but we need to turn it into political mobilisation. We need to turn it into a movement which pushes for two things. Number one, accountability um, and justice, but also number two, 
uh, it needs to kick back against the aims of regeneration of uh, this estate, which has been going on for about a year and a half, two years. They have been building towards it. We as a community have been organizing against it. But what I also fear with this is it can be weaponized in that they can look at the other blocks around here, the other four very large tower blocks, and say to them, you don't want to happen to you what happened in Grenfell, so therefore you should allow us to knock down these blocks. Now, people that live in this area have uh, school nearby for their children, have jobs nearby. We need to maintain the sense of community here because when you take away the physical possibility of community, you take away the emotional and psychological possibility of community. And this is an area with a very rich tradition of diasporic brilliance. This is the area where Bob Marley recorded Exodus. This is the area of the Mangrove Nine, Darkest Howl. This is the area where Kelso Cochrane was killed that led to the carnival. This, this is the area of Frestonia. This is an area of so many interesting, beautiful, subversive movements. We can't allow gentrification to um, to eat at it and uh, to essentially aim at homogenizing the population here. We have to resist social cleansing and we have to do everything that we can to make sure that this mobilization and galvanization of people, which of course is positive, but what I would say is on the night when it was happening and we were out in the street, it was only people from the community here. Not many of those people are still here. The people that now are here, which we're blessed by their presence, obviously, they're not people that live here. They're not people that live here. Part of it has turned into the big spectacle of you know this carcass of a building where death happened, you know, and the corpses are still there. You know, my friend who came out from the 15th floor and, and, and survived miraculously, he was tripping over corpses coming out. There's been a cover-up in the amount of people that have died in this building. And you know, my point is is that we have to use these numbers and we have to really aim political organization and mobilization we have to meet we have to talk we have to find ways for us to legally move towards justice and compensation for all the people that have suffered here